All right, we're back to shooting the monster and we've done a pretty good job so far. So we've programmed all the other sprites to hide from the screen and we've programmed the start of the game. It's time to actually make the player interact with the monster. And the first sprite that I'm going to program in this video is going to be the monster sprite. So when we click on the flag, the monster will start cycling between some costumes that it has. So notice that it's wobbling around. We'll keep the red one for later when we hit the monster with our bullets. So we'll make the monster cycle in between these costumes and make it fade into the screen when we hit the flag. So I'm going to go to code and I'm going to bring in our very favorite when flag clicked block. So when we hit the flag, we want the monster to go to the center of the stage. So I'm going to bring in this go to block x0 and y0. This is the dead center of the stage. And I want it to point in direction 90. So point into its natural direction. When the player wins the game, we will rotate the monster and create this disappearance effect. So at the start of the game, I want to make sure that the monster stays in direction 90. I also want to make the monster show on the stage because at the end of the game we'll make it disappear. I also want to ensure that its size is at 25% because I showed you at the beginning the monster is initially quite big. I don't want that so I'd like to set its size to 25%. I will make it switch its costume to Evil Eye 1. So this is the first costume that you're seeing here on the screen. And I also want the monster to fade into the screen. So you know the drill. I will set its ghost effect to 100. And I will make it fade into the screen. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring a repeat block. And from the look section, I'm going to change the ghost effect. Now I will want the monster to fade in very slowly. So I will do 50 repetitions and change the ghost effect by negative two. Then I will make the monster cycle in between its costumes. So I'm going to go to control, I'm going to bring in a forever loop and I'm going to make it cycle in between its costumes. So I am going to go to looks and switch costume to evil eye two and wait for a little bit. So go to control and wait say 0 0.1 seconds, so a tenth of a second. Then duplicate this script inside the forever loop and put it right here. And then duplicate it again and put it inside the forever loop. So we have three switches and three waiting times. I would like to choose the costumes to be Evil Eye 1, Evil Eye 2, and Evil Eye 3 and then the cycle will repeat again. So the costume will get back to Evil Eye 1 and then waiting a little bit of time, Evil Eye 2, Evil Eye 3, and so on and so forth. So if I hit the flag, notice that the monster fades in and then it quickly starts cycling its costumes, making this wobbly effect like every monster does, right? And throughout the entire game, the monster will carry on doing that, all right? Now it's time to move to the player sprite and let's prepare this for the start of the game. So I'm going to go to events and bring in when flag clicked. All right. And I want the player sprite to show on the screen because if the monster kills me, I will hide the sprite. So I want to make sure that at the start of the game, the player sprite is seen. I also want to make sure that its ghost effect is set to zero so I'm going to set its ghost effect, its transparency effect to zero, because if the monster hits me, I will create this little hit effect by flashing its transparency effect very briefly. I'm going to show that in a second. All right. So I'm going to make sure the transparency effect is set to zero. Then I will also ensure that the player sprite moves at the center of the screen. So I'm going to bring in this go to block and set X to zero and Y to zero and point in direction 90 so that the sprite looks exactly as it is on stage right now. Good. Now, I also want to react to the start game message that 
the play sprite broadcasts when I click it. So when I click the play sprite, I will make the player sprite active that is able to rotate around the monster. So here goes. I'm going to go to events and I'm going to bring in this when I receive block. Now when I receive start game, so as soon as I click the play sprite, this player sprite will receive the start game message. So I will want to make it able to control by the left and right arrow keys so that I can rotate around the monster. So I'm going to bring in a forever loop. All right. And two if blocks. So the first one and the second one. These if blocks will check whether I'm pressing the left and right arrow keys. So I'm going to go to sensing and I'm going to bring in this key space pressed. And instead of space, I'm going to select left arrow and right arrow. So when I press the left arrow key, I will want the player spread to rotate in a clockwise fashion around the monster. Now, we learned from earlier projects how to rotate a sprite around itself, but how do we make them rotate around something else? This might be pretty hard, so it's time we learned a new thing about rotation. Now, the thing is, rotating a sprite doesn't actually happen out of thin air. Rotating a sprite must happen around something. So, most of the sprites that we rotated in this course happened around the center of the sprite. So when we rotated the basketball in the Pong game, we rotated around the center of the ball. Every sprite has a center, denoted by this cross icon. And for the player sprite, I've drawn the ship away from the center of the sprite on purpose. Because when you rotate the sprite, the ship will automatically rotate around this point. So if I bring in, for example, a rotation of 15 degrees, just out of thin air, and I'm clicking it, notice how, how the sprite rotates. It rotates around that point. So when you say, go to certain coordinates, you're actually saying that this center point will move to those coordinates. The center point will also act as a center of rotation, so that when you rotate a sprite, it will rotate around that point. So, what I've done here by going to x equals 0 and y equals 0 is, in fact, moving the center of the sprite to the dead center of the stage. And rotating 15 degrees means rotating the ship around that point, which is at the dead center of the stage. So this is how we achieve rotation around the monster. So when I press the left arrow key, I will want to rotate in a clockwise fashion, and I will set this rotation to 5 degrees. And if I press the right arrow key, I will move in a counterclockwise direction by 5 degrees. So let's hit the flag now and see the effect of that. So notice the uh, monster fades in, the play button fades in, the player sprite is inactive. As I'm pressing the left and right arrow key, I can't do anything. But once I press the play sprite, notice how the ship can rotate around the monster. Alright, let's carry on to the next video where we actually get to hit the monster.